The vehicle industry is shifting over to electrics and Ford has got the number one selling pickup truck in the country. In fact, the number one selling vehicle in the country for decades now, the F-150. And they have taken it and turned it into the F-150 Lightning, which is powered by electrons. This is a pretty big risk for Ford, or is it? Let's find out today. Ford invited me to preview the new F-150 Lightning, the fully electric version of the F-150. It's not on sale yet, but Ford expects it will be in the second quarter of 2022. Very few people outside Ford have seen these trucks, much less experienced what they are like in person. We are going to learn about the battery packs, charging, range, and use of the truck as a power source, and then we're going to take it out on the test track. This whole experience was about 90 minutes long and it was extremely windy, so we did our best with the audio. So Ford is electrifying its icons and the F-150 is one of the most iconic trucks ever built in the US. Why the F-150? Why take this as your first truck to market with electrification? Yeah, so obviously this is an exciting product and it was really important to us to our strategy for motor companies is to electrify our icons. We really didn't want to make a compliance vehicle. So we felt what better way to make a statement and kind of create that electric revolution with electrifying the F-150. The Lightning actually sports a completely new chassis. It does retain the body on frame design, so we have the look and the cabin from the gas versions, so they're keeping the truck familiar to current buyers. It looks mostly the same. The cabin is very familiar and the controls are all in a familiar place. The new chassis has been beefed up and strengthened to handle the extra weight of the battery pack. Again, the chassis is completely different than that of the regular F-150. This is built from the ground up for electrification. The battery pack is serviceable and there are eight bolts that hold it in place. Ford says if there's a problem with the battery, individual cells are replaceable. A tech can drop the battery and remove and replace an individual cell on the battery. The cooling system for the battery is sealed so that you don't need to service it to replace a cell on the battery. Powering the Lightning are two motors, one up front, one in the rear. And the motors are the same regardless of which battery pack you opt for, the long range or the standard range. And this thing makes a ton of torque. Combined output from both motors on the standard range is 426 horsepower and 775 pound-feet of torque. And on the long range, it's 563 horsepower with the same torque. The range is 230 miles and 300 miles respectively for the long range. Ford thinks this will be the biggest battery pack available on an EV when it launches. Ford offers three different charging solutions for your home or your farm. Included with the vehicle is a 32 amp charger and the charger is actually inside the cable. You can connect this to a 120 volt wall outlet or a 240 volt wall outlet which would be typical for a washer dryer. Now 120 is definitely going to be the slowest way to juice up. There's two other charging options for your home or residence. There's the Ford Connected Charge Station. That's a 48 amp charger. And you don't need to buy it from Ford necessarily. You can go with a third party charger like this ChargePoint Flex, for example. This is called a level two charger. You're gonna be able to charge faster with this at home. You typically need a 60 amp circuit to make it work. With a standard range battery, you're looking at about 10 hours to charge or 13 with your extended range battery. And I'm talking about going from 15 to 100%. Now things get interesting with the 80 amp charger. You do need a 100 amp service to power it. Most homes built after the 80s have 200 amp service. But if the power goes out in your house, you can actually use your F-150 Lightning to power your house but you have to get this 80 amp charger. I'm not sure if you need to get this from Ford or if you can get another 80 amp charger from another source. And if you're on the road, you can use a DC fast charger such as EVgo or Electrify America. You can go from about 15 to 80% in just a little over 40 minutes. And here's a fun fact, the extended range battery version has two chargers so it can actually charge a little bit faster than the standard range. Need to tow something? Well, towing is a pretty prime consideration when purchasing a pickup truck. And it's no secret that EVs have a reputation for range loss when towing heavy payloads. The Lightning in the standard range has a, a towing capacity of 7,000 pounds, 
and 10,000 pounds for the extended range, and the payload is up to 2,000 pounds. I asked Ford how much towing impacts range. What, what we say is you can't be physics. So similar to a gas or diesel, let's say you tow 10,000 pounds, let's say 40%. So it will be similar to a gas or diesel, but they're, what Ian's mentioning, we really can't give you a number because BEVs are unique where the faster you go, let's say 80 miles per hour, aero becomes a factor. Up hills because there's no gears in the BEV, you know, hills are a little bit different than the gas, but but really all those factors, what Ian was mentioning, intelligent ranges, our goal is, let's say if it goes from 300, drops down 40%, we will tell you that before it leaves your driveway. And we want it to give you that information so you can make the decision of where to stop it. Since we can't test it out yet, it will be interesting to see how this works in real world conditions. I'm looking forward to checking this out in the spring. The F-150 Lightning is actually the first F-150 with independent rear suspension. There's no solid axle anymore, and that's because it uses two motors. One is to be able to have the optimized kind of performance around driving and handling, we wanted to put those dual motors, one on each axle. By doing that, we really couldn't have a traditional axle, but at the same time, what we found is utilizing an independent rear suspension with those dual motor setup, it basically, it, it drives like no other F-150, but it still is able to have that payload and towing that you'd expect in an F-150. Ford might not be the first high volume EV truck to market, and they are positioning it a little bit differently than Rivian. Now Ford on the other hand is making sure that the Lightning offers something for commercial customers. If you're a contractor, you're gonna be able to use your F-150 Lightning to power tools at a job site. It essentially works like a portable generator. Ford calls this Pro Power On Board and you've got AC outlets throughout the truck, through the bed, and also in the frunk. You can use it for tools, lights, other equipment, and it's all controlled by this big display on the dashboard, which by the way, is borrowed from the Mach-E. They come to the screen here. So right now, obviously we've got it on, and then as I mentioned earlier, you can actually toggle through which one you want activated, okay? So right now at the front circuit, we're utilizing 620 watts. Okay, so that could be the light uh, and the fan. Uh, at the rear, probably the fan's running right now, so about 100, 140, and then the TV at the other one. Another fun fact is that Ford powered this entire day, all these tents with all the speakers and the lights and the fans and everything from a single F-150 Lightning. So that's all pretty cool, but the real party trick here is the lightning can power your entire house if the electric grid goes down. You will need this 80 amp charging station that I mentioned earlier, and I asked Ford how long the battery will last. And they said, you can go three to 11 days, depending on your usage, you can power your entire house with this. So that should be hopefully long enough to get you through the zombie apocalypse. Ford plans to produce 240 gigawatt hours of battery cell capacity by 2030. Something unique to the Lightning, which you don't get on the regular F-150, is the front trunk or frunk. Now you can use it for additional cargo, but it also has power outlets. So again, you can power tools, lights, anything you want. And if you lift it up, there is additional illumination that you can use at night. But finally, let's get to the most fun part, the handling and acceleration. So one of the benefits of having a motor in the front and a motor in the back and a big battery down below is this improves handling. And because it has independent rear suspension, you actually get better ride quality too. So you get a lower center of gravity, but overall, this gives you a weight penalty of about 1,100 pounds over the regular F-150. But the huge benefit is in acceleration. So we're inside the F-150 Lightning, and unfortunately I'm not driving, but we have a pro driver here. What's your name? John. John, all right, you're gonna show us around the track. So let's have at it. All righty. So John, what's the zero to 60 in this truck? Well, the numbers aren't really published yet. It's supposed to be around mid four, low to mid four. Well, let's, uh, let's feel it. Wow. That is mighty quick for a big truck with four passengers in here. 
How does this compare to driving the regular F-150 handling wise? Oh, yeah, right now you'd probably be sick driving the regular F-150. The body roll would be terrible on an autocross like this. Um, this stays really flat, very nice, perfectly neutral. So since I'm not driving, I have to ask you, what's it like to drive? Oh, it's as much fun as you'll ever have in a pickup truck. It seems to me like it's the 90s sports car technology, to be honest. Uh, like I said, very flat, very neutral driving. No chatter from the rear end. Right, so putting the power down out of the corners, is no wheel spin. No, none at all. Very, very solid on all four wheels. Always trying to keep the traction on all four. So does it feel like driving a regular F-150? No, not at all. Yeah, absolutely not at all. I mean, the feel, you know, the comfort and everything's there, but, uh, you know, the, the, the performance is so much better. But this will feel familiar to an F-150 driver in the, in the Absolutely. essence. When they get in, they should see lots of familiar stuff. And even the stuff that's not familiar is very self-explanatory, very easy to get to. But, yeah, the old, the old type guy that really loves his F-150 won't have any problems getting real used to this one either. And we can do this all day, do these autocross runs all day long without having any overheating issues or no, anything like that? None at all. We've been doing this. This is city number seven, I believe. Um, and we've had no issues at all with mechanical of any kind. So it never overheats doing this? No, not at all. Not even close. Just how much of a risk is Ford really taking with the F-150 Lightning? They just announced that they have 150,000 reservations right now. When I was at this event a couple days ago, it was 120,000. So it seems like reservations are still rolling in. They also announced that they are investing an additional $250 million into plants in Michigan. Most of these are going to go to 450 jobs that are going to help assemble the F-150 Lightning so they can ramp up their production because apparently they've got more orders than they expected. The truck actually just started pre-production, so some trucks have been rolling off the assembly line. And Ford says they have invested a total of $7.7 .7 billion in into Michigan since 2016. And it starts at about $40,000 for the Pro Edition. That's gonna come with vinyl and is really aimed at contractors. And you're gonna be able to configure it up to, they say around the $90,000 level for the upper trims. Now, who is this truck for? It's obviously gonna be for tech savvy people, people who are probably interested and perhaps might buy an EV. But the real focus, the thing that I got out of this presentation is that Ford is aiming this heavily at contractors, people who go on work on homes, who are on job sites, who are using the truck for work. And they really put a lot of emphasis on the way that you can power your job site with this and also power your home if the power goes offline. So they're really sort of focusing, at least initially, on the commercial use, the people that are going to be using this truck on a day-to-day -day basis and making money with it. So that's a big differentiating factor for Ford. In my opinion, they are going all in on EVs. Is this a big risk? Absolutely. We still have quite a number of years to go before we sort of transition into this more EV-centric world. But Ford seems to be pretty all in on this. They are trying to minimize the risk. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I really like bringing you content like this. My name is Eric. See you in the next video.